Welcome back to the Arise interview, where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anyegulu. Now, you probably know by now that a panel of inquiry has submitted a report which says Nigerian armed forces shot and killed anti-police brutality protesters last year in the Nigerian commercial city of Lagos. The report, released on Monday, identifies 48 casualties after the army opened fire on demonstrators at the Leki Toll Gate. It says that soldiers intentionally shot at protesters. It also found that after the army retreated, police officers continued the violence and tried to clean up the scene, taking bodies away and removing bullets. Some of the findings match previous reports by Amnesty International as well as local and international media. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Samwa Olu, who set up the panel, has promised a proper response to the findings. He said a white paper will be published within the next two weeks. Well, for their reaction and assessment of that report, I'm joined now from Lagos by the former presidential candidate and founder of the Center for Values in Leadership, Professor Pat Utomi, and here in the Abuja studio by the notable activist and law student, Deji Adeanju. Thank you very much indeed to both of you. And let me come to you, Professor Pat Utomi. Thank you very much indeed for joining us. Sir, uh, how much of a defining moment is this or is it likely to be for Nigeria as the world watches avidly and this uh, this report that's just been produced? Yes, <clears throat> clearly it's going to be a defining moment. A defining moment for a variety of reasons, uh, particularly because of the shameless way in which public officials denied that this happened. It shows that we have built a system that is based on, on truth, that is based on uh, deceiving people. Uh, I feel in a particular way about this whole thing because I experienced it directly. I watched this thing happen, literally, uh, on that evening. I had gotten myself ready. I was wearing an NSAS t-shirt. I was going to go out there and encourage the young people and say to them, uh, this is what we did when we were your age. And you have to be the conscience of your society. If you don't speak up, you will suffer grave harm you know, down the line. And then the coffee was announced and I thought, okay, it's not proper for me to go out. And I went up on the deck of my house, from which you can see clearly, uh, literally speaking, the uh, toll gate. And as I was there with my wife and we were talking about these things, I heard a siren. It began from the end of um, Uzumbambadi Way, close, close to Bonny Camp, and it was coming. And I thought to myself, who is this egomaniac that is traveling around with sirens on a night like this? There is a curfew, there can't be any cars on the street. Why is this siren coming? And it just kept coming and getting closer and closer. And just the moment it went past the Exxon Mobil building, approaching the toll gate, fire, gunfire opened. There wasn't any warning. Get out of there, you kids. Um, no uh, tear gas, no water cannons. I just had gunfire and I said oh my god I hope they are not doing this because they do it sometimes deliberately to put the fear of the gun in everybody they not only wanted to intimidate those kids they wanted to intimidate the rest of the country this is how fascism uh, tribes and I immediately grabbed my phone and began to call the governor and I asked my wife to try calling the deputy governor she got through to the deputy governor first and I said to him what are you guys doing What's happened? And he said, oh my God, you know, the reason we got this curfew on was that we wanted to prevent this from happening. You could tell that he knew that there were people who were planning to do that. And his countenance, you know, literally fell that they seemed to have been getting what they wanted to do. So it was premeditated mass murder of young Nigerians. And it's a tragedy that people had the 
conscience to publicly deny that this this happened it will define it will be a, a line in the sand it will be uh, as historic a moment as the uh, killing of the coal miners in Enugu uh, as the women's riots in about 20 years before that you know 29 49 and look if we don't get to the heart of this our country will suffer forever for this because you need these defining moments to turn away from what is wrong i understand that this comes from a certain tradition in nigerian military and policing look the west african uh, frontier force that the british created was an army of suppression and that's the mindset the nigerian army was built around the original policing in nigeria was called the Hausa Constabulary because people who did not know the people were brought from far away to come and suppress people in Lagos. That was the whole concept of policing under the British. What we must do is reprogram and retrain the Nigerian military and the Nigerian police force to recognize that it is not about suppressing people. It's about making sure that society runs in a certain harmony level. Okay, uh, Professor Pat, please stay with us and thank you very much indeed for that really good insight and also that eyewitness account because I didn't know that this, uh, this is how it actually happened to you. But let me bring in Deji Adeanju, who is of course another person who is very well known in this country for his uh, unrelenting pursuit of, of justice, is a human rights activist uh, and, and has worked tirelessly um, on behalf of people who he considers to be oppressed in the country. And the description, Deji, by the panel um, in that report, they call it a massacre. I mean, you, you couldn't get more damning than that. Um, are you surprised at how undisguised and candid this report turned out to be? Because it is quite frank and clearly quite impartial. Yeah, uh, first, I want to commend the members of the panel. Uh, it's a, it was a panel set up by the government of Lagos itself. And so I want to commend the courage for not compromising the part of the members. I have spoken to some members of the panel to commend them uh, for the great job that they have done. History will be very kind to them. Uh, again, I must stress the fact that we, ha we currently have a shameless government. Uh, the denial of the government, I don't think it will stop. You know, there was no need to even have uh, needed validation for whether people died or not. We all watched it live. DJ switched, uh, live streamed the events and the killings uh, at the toll gate. Uh, thank God that the panel set up by the government has now come to, you know, fully depict how the massacre took place. However, it's also important to know that the principal actors of this panel of this massacre was the president and commander in chief of the armed forces, President Mohamed Buhari. You know, we must stop shift, shifting the bulk because it is only him that controls the military. We saw before that massacre happened, just like Professor Pat Tome, respected nationalist, has said that we saw the, uh, uh, the service chiefs, they met the president in the afternoon before that thing happened, mm. and Brigadier General Taiwo uh, had gone to the panel to testify that uh, Lieutenant General Buratai now retired, gave the order. Uh, he told the panel that he gave the order for soldiers to be deployed, and it was the soldiers that shot at the toll gate. So these people, especially Lieutenant, uh, Colonel, uh, Buratai, Lieutenant General Buratai, he must be held accountable for his actions, you know, and it is very clear under international law, especially the Rome status, Article 7 of the Rome Statute says, for anyone who commits crimes like this, it's, it's called crimes against humanity, you know, that they, they must be prosecuted by the state and the contracting party. Nigeria is a contracting party to the Rome Statute and several other international treaties. And that when they fail to do so, that the international community must prosecute them. So, and the interesting thing is that we, we my organization, we currently have a subsisting petition at the ICC against Buratai on this subject matter. And we had gotten favorable response from the ICC, you know, and that the ICC must go a step further. That's what we have been pressing now with the new report. We are annexing the report to file a, a, a better petition to the ICC to say these are additional uh, information as regards to the massacre. 
uh, the crimes against humanity committed by the army under the supervision of Lieutenant uh, uh, Major General Buratai, and that he should be an international arrest warrant to be issued uh, against him, and that he should be prosecuted because. We are convinced that the government of President Muhammad Buhari will not prosecute the perpetrators of this crime. We are also going to be calling on other officers who participated actively, participated in, in the commission of the massacre at Lake Itoge to also be prosecuted. Uh, the in interesting thing about international law is that it says that even after the command had been given for the massacre, that those who refuse to take actions against the perpetrators will also be liable. So the Nigerian army, they are very liable in all these atrocities. And the box stops to the table of the president. The president and commander in chief of, of armed forces is guilty of, of crimes against humanity against the Nigerian people as witness in Lekki Togate. And we must just call it what it is. You know, and the good thing again is that, you know, even heads of states are not protected from being for arrest warrants being issued against them by the ICC. So the the attempt by the Mohammed Buhari regime to try to uh, shield uh, Buratai by offering him diplomatic immunity does not suffice in this case. Buratai is the one who was responsible for killing people at the toll gate, acting on the instruction of President Buhari and Brigadier General Taiwo had told the panel and it's in the report. Mm. You know so the ICC does not need any further evidence. And when Nigeria is not going to prosecute the perpetrators of this crime. And therefore, the ICC must step in. And this is what we are going to be doing henceforth. We are calling other well-meaning Nigerians and even members of the diplomatic court to put pressure on the ICC okay. to, to arrest the perpetrators of this heinous crime. Well, clearly, you're not going to let it lying down. Not at all. And uh, unfortunately for them, you're now also a law student, yeah. so you know the law and yeah. you know what you're talking about. Yeah. But let me come back to you, Professor Pat Utomi. Thank you very much indeed for your uh, patience. Um, I, I expect that you've seen excerpts of that report. It's, it's floating around the internet at the moment. Um, quite a number of recommendations about where things should go from here. Um, I understand that it calls for prosecutions, that compensation should be paid, that there should be some process uh, initiated to reconcile the young people who led the protests and the government to mend the relationship which has clearly broken down. What are your thoughts on that? And if, you, if we have to interrupt you, uh, uh, we will, but we'll come back and let you finish. Okay. Well, thank you very much. I, I think that, you know, you have to, you know, really commend the, the panel uh, for the depth of their probing and the wisdom in their suggestions. Uh, there is no question that there's a huge trust deficit in Nigeria between those who govern and those that are governed, between the military, the police, and the people. No society can travel very far with that level of distrust between its major institutions and members of society. And so suggestions about a healing process. Incidentally, you know, um, a couple of years ago, uh, um, I think uh, when, um, uh, um, who was chief of defense staff, uh, Paul Dickey, there was an, a project, and a friend of mine, uh, Dr., the late Dr. Eberi Ongudiwe, was involved in a project on civilian military I really have to apologize, Professor Utomi. I apologize. I'm going to come straight back to you so that you can finish that thought. I apologize, but we have to take a break. So please stay with us. You're watching The Arise interview. Plenty more still ahead as we continue our analysis of the official report into the shooting at the Lekki Toll Gate in Lagos just over a year ago. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Arise interview. I'm Charles Zinyagul. Now a panel of inquiry set up here in Nigeria by the Lagos State Authorities to investigate the shooting of protesters in Lagos just over a year ago has submitted a damning report against the army and police. The panel, made up of legal professionals and activists, found evidence that security forces shot and killed unarmed protesters on the night of the 20th of October last year. The report lists names of 48 casualties, 11 
11 of whom are dead and four who are missing and presumed to be dead. The panel says that after the army retreated, police officers continued the violence, but the security forces have denied shooting live rounds at protesters. And still with me are the former presidential candidate and founder of the Center for Values and Leadership, Professor Patu Tomi, and the activist and law student, Deji Adeyanju. Uh, Professor Patu Tomi, thank you very much indeed, well, to both of you, actually. But back to you, uh, Prof. I, I apologize for interrupting you. We had to take a break. But you were completing a thought before we went on the break. Please continue. Yes, I was saying that years ago when Marshal Paul D.K. was chief of defense staff, that a friend of mine, Professor Eberon Udiwe, uh, had an, an initiative, a contract actually from the military, to go around the country training the military, trying to humanize the military, uh, you know, on military-civilian relations. And I was invited to speak at one of those in Lagos. I remember it was at the Air Force Cantonment, I believe, in Ikeja. And I said uh, on that occasion that the military should remember Nuremberg, that it is not enough to say that I was ordered, that people who carried out orders paid the price at the Nuremberg trials after World War II with regard to how they treated the Jews. And I had hoped that that process that Paul Dickey had started would continue. But obviously, it was not continued. So we still have a military that very sadly has the mentality of the West Africa Frontier Force. In spite of the fact that it has had injected into its ranks a lot of brilliant people. I interact with bright young officers very often. And I am very proud of the Nigerian military in terms of quality of people who have entered. But there's still a culture that goes back to the West African Frontier Force and with the police that goes back to the Hausa Constabulary. So we need to continue a process. And in many ways, this panel's report suggests that we need to continue a process that humanizes the military. Otherwise, this gulf, these, uh, these great cleavages uh, will not allow Nigeria to be a society that can function and uh, normally, and this affects everything, investments, uh, the very nature of security challenges we face in our country, all flow from this distrust between the institutions of government and the people. It's a huge, huge legitimacy crisis that's not allowing our country to function as it should. Thank you for that, P Professor Termi. Let me bring you back in, uh, Deji Adey, and you're just listening to the professor there. Um, of course, these protests, which you, of course, took part in even before the big ones. I mean, you were the people who started the whole idea of protesting against police brutality. And that was what it was in the first place. So what now about the way the police will be further viewed in this country? Yes. You know, one thing that the NSAS protest has proven is that, you know, we never learn in this part of the world because in Nigeria... And, and maybe just some few uh, countries are the only countries in the world where you'll be protesting against pro police brutality and you will still be brutalized by the police and even further killed extrajudicially by the police and the army. You know, and what Pro Prof has said is, is so apt and that is the position of the law that when people carry out this kind of atrocities mm. that they must be held individually you know, cr cr individual criminally liable. So there is and a sense of impunity. Yeah, That's of course, basically what of, it of is. Of course. And you see, the, the, the GOC of the 81 division of the Nigerian Army in Lagos is individually liable for the atrocities committed at Lekki Togate. Burata is individually liable and is also liable as a command responsibility under international law. So the president is, in the, is liable as the commander in chief of the armed forces. So we need to properly place the blames where the blames belong. And so, and because the idea is that if these people get away with it, a template has been set and successive governments will come and do worse. And the danger, because even under, under the military, hmm. when Kudirat Abiola was killed, the government never denied that she, ne she was never killed. But here we are in a so-called democracy. People were killed in broad daylight. Everybody saw it. 
on live is not recorded live internet feeds the videos are all over the internet but Lai Mohammed denied that the thing never happened Malami went further to say that it was hoodlums that wore Nigerian army uniform and went to kill people at Lekki Togate. So you can see the impunity with which the government operates. So, and the reason why we must not let this slide is because this is a democracy. Even if we are not practicing democracy, let us pretend that we are. Because all over the world, we have seen cases where people who gave orders have been prosecuted. We have seen it in former Serbia, during the former Serbia conflict war. Dusko Tadic yeah, was prosecuted. Former Yugoslavia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was prosecuted and jailed at the ICC. We also saw Bosco in, 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 in Taganda in yes. Rwanda. He was jailed and killed and sentenced for 30 years for the crimes he committed. So the idea that Boratai will be made an ambassador at large and that he will escape liability because of the diplomatic immunity, we should not allow such things happen. Mm. The idea that President Mohamed Buhari will perpetrate all this crime go back to Daura, retire and enjoy his lifetime, we should not allow it because if we permit these things to take place, other governments will come and say, after all, Buhari did it and he got away with it. Boratai did it and he got away with it. So people will naturally be doing it and the country will be worse off. In, again, it's, it's also important to add that the victims of these crimes, they have gone to the panel hospitals have gone to the panel to testify. There's ample evidence in the report to prosecute these people. Mm. Because even, look at the Charles Taylor case. It was victims that led to the prosecution of Charles Taylor. The testimony, so these victims and the report of the panel, Lagos right. State, we must commend Lagos State government for not interfering and tampering with the whole report, reporting system. Because if it had been in Abuja, I'm sure that this report will have been completely tampered with and this might not have been the outcome yes i have to agree with you about the lagos state i mean lagos state has consistently set a standard in this Absolutely. country Absolutely. and i think the rest of the country would do well to emulate that but let me come back to you professor patu termi you probably are going to have the last word on this um you are of course a former presidential candidate former governorship candidate um we have the presidential elections coming up in 2023 would this country be better served if the youth channeled their anger towards mobilizing themselves to find good candidates and vote for them and therefore vote for positive change absolutely I mean, this should really spur us all on, the young people particularly, to look for the big issues and not the big men. Uh, Nigeria lies prostrate because Nigerian politics is the politics of the big men, an outflow from state capture. And they use the fact that they capture the state and bend public resources, public systems to serve private interests. And so they make a mess of elections so elections don't really take place in Nigeria. But you can see Nigerians are already fighting back. Uh, Anambra is a good example. There are some examples elsewhere. If the youth take the momentum of this and say we want to listen to big issues, solutions to problems, and not that this big man or that big man is funding that, then they can change things. If you look at the register of voters in Nigeria, I mean, it's such a small percentage that belongs to political parties. A much, much bigger percentage really is not in involved. If that population comes and decides time to get rid of all of this, I mean, a very respected lawyer, and I keep repeating this. I, I'm comment. really sorry, Professor uh, Pat, uh, uh, um, Professor. but we, we, we're out of time, and I really apologize. I'm sorry about that, but we have to go. Professor Pat Atomi, Deji Ade, and you, thank you very much yeah. indeed. That's it for this edition of the Arise interview. Join us again tomorrow. From me and the entire team here in Abuja and Lagos, bye-bye, and thank you for watching.